The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Our next speaker is Dr. Royce Floyd. Royce received his Ph.D. degree from the University of Arkansas. As a student, he received ACI's Presidential Fellowship in 2009, and he is currently an assistant professor at the University of Oklahoma, where he's been since 2012. Royce will be talking to us about the uh, a review of creep and shrinkage of self-consolidating concrete for pre-stressed concrete applications. Please help me welcome Royce. So uh, just to start out, I mean, we all should know what self-consolidating concrete is being in this particular session, but it's highly foldable, consolidates under its own weight. We attribute that to its low yield stress and high viscosity. And then uh, we can use it to reduce the on-site on costs, uh, improve the work environment, and improve the finishing quality. Uh, the reason that we want to add the lightweight aggregate to that uh, is to be able to get a product that has a lower density uh, due to the, the lower density lightweight aggregate. And then we also can get some benefits from the internal water within the lightweight aggregate uh, as well. So we start with our lightweight aggregates that are moisture conditioned, which gives us some additional benefits, uh, which we get the internal curing effects and uh, improved durability. Uh, and then we can, of course, reduce the overall dead load, which is very helpful in transporting uh, precast members. So we add the effects of SCC uh, and lightweight concrete together and we get this product of lightweight SCC. So the question is if we're adding these uh, material types together, so the properties of self-consolidating concrete with the higher cement contents and the admixtures uh, together with lightweight aggregate, how is that going to influence the long-term behavior, which has a large impact on pre-stress losses? Uh, so the things that we're most concerned about in that long-term behavior is creep. So that's our viscoelastic response of concrete under compressive load. Uh, and so we quantify that typically with our creep coefficient, which has some uh, interesting effects when we deal with lightweight uh, SCC. Also, as well as shrinkage, uh, and the different types of shrinkage we have over time are, again, affected by the, the internal water in our lightweight aggregates, so both the, uh, the chemical shrinkage of the cement as well as the drying shrinkage over time. So if we think about creep and shrinkage, we have several factors that affect that behavior, which in terms of the aggregate and the restraint provided by the aggregate, just the compressive strength of the concrete, which can differ uh, for lightweight materials, uh, the size and shape of the, the members, and then temperature and humidity effects, curing time, and age at loading. So the things that we were really looking at uh, as far as for lightweight SCC was the lower elastic modulus that comes from the less stiff aggregate uh, for the lightweight aggregates, uh, the reduced aggregate content coming from the self-consolidating uh, composition of the mixture, and then also the effects of the internal curing water within those aggregates. Uh, as far as for strength, for uh, SCC, we typically have a lower water cement ratio, a higher cement content, and in many cases, a, a higher compressive strength. So specifically for our pre-stressed applications, we're thinking in terms of the pre-stressed losses. And so uh, the elastic shortening, we always in, we would intend to be, or expect to be less because of the lower modulus. That's not what we're focused on here is more, we're talking about the creep and shrinkage losses. So it's going to uh, be affected by that elastic shortening and the remaining pre-stressed force. Uh, also the concrete type, so the SCC and the lightweight aggregate in there as well, and then the fact that they occur together. And then our relaxation of steel, again, is not going to be affected by our concrete. So when we compare to the predictions that are out there, so for creep and shrinkage, ACI 209, the ASHTO specifications, and in pre-stress losses, we have the, the ZIA method as well as the ASHTO LRFD pre-stress loss method. And so how are those uh, how are they going to be at predicting losses for lightweight self-consolidating concrete? 
So if we look at the previous research, we come through and we find several interesting themes that come together. And if we take uh, all the way back uh, to Tudeller in 1957, we see that looking at lightweight concrete, they found a reduced early creep and a, uh, an expansion at that early age, but a larger final shrinkage. And that's something that continues to come up as we go through. So going through again, we see that uh, higher creep, higher shrinkage uh, came up uh, by Pfeiffer in 1968. And then moving on into 1970 and Branson et al., they found that we had higher pre-stress losses for lightweight concrete. Okay, most of this was attributed to the increased elastic shortening. So more recently, uh, looking at uh, expanded slate ash toe girders, we found that the losses were actually less than predicted when we were looking at typical just lightweight concrete. Uh, then considering internal curing, we uh, again found uh, through cement mortars by Geiker et al. there in 2004 that the internal curing reduces the autogenous shrinkage there of the cement uh, due to uh, reduced capillary tension from the water being pulled from a larger void in the aggregate. Uh, then uh, Mauricio Lopez in 2004-2005 looked at high performance lightweight concrete, again found a lower shrinkage rate uh, and lower shrinkage at early ages, but then a higher total shrinkage over time. Uh, and then a smaller specific creep uh, for similar paste contents, uh, but he also found that the pre-stress loss equations were uh, adequate. Uh, so Xi and Wu started looking finally at the combination of the two, so looking at some lightweight SCC, and found the same early age expansion that had been shown over time, but the incorporation of some of the, the fly ash and the glass powder uh, could lead to a higher shrinkage as well. Uh, then Gold Party et al. in 2007, looking at SCC versus conventional concrete, found that they had uh, some similar shrinkage behavior. Kayad and Mitchell, again looking at SCC, found an increased uh, creep, uh, and then a reduced shrinkage due to some of the admixtures within the self-consolidated concrete. Uh, Davies in 2008, uh, looking at lightweight concrete bridge beams, so again, it's not, this one's not self-consolidating, but just lightweight concrete. Uh, shrinkage uh, was in the same ranges for normal weight concrete and had a similar creep coefficient. Uh, Zeal et al. in 2009, again, looking specifically at lightweight SCC uh, in ash toe girders, again had measured losses less than predicted. So that he uh, recommended no changes there in the pre-stress loss predictions. And then again, Lopez uh, et al. in 2010, uh, looking at high performance lightweight concrete, I saw a lower shrinkage from early expansion, which is a repeated theme there, and then similar creep and shrinkage at later ages. Uh, so Ward in 2010 was looking at lightweight SCC double T's, measured pre-stress losses over time that again were less than the predicted values from the uh, Zia and Ashto methods, but the losses obse were observed later on in the age of the concrete than typical. Uh, then Zeal et al. in 2011, looking at uh, SCC bridge girders, uh, found a higher creep, but again no increase in shrinkage. And then Long and Kayat in 2011 uh, saw that uh, the autogenous shrinkage for SCC was similar to high performance concrete, uh, had a larger drying shrinkage for SCC uh, caused by the increased cement content, and then a higher creep for SCC as well. Uh, Holst et al. in 2011 looked at a comparison of lightweight SCC and uh, SCC and found lower shrinkage for lightweight SCC a lower creep coefficient for lightweight SCC, which we'll talk about a little more as we go. And uh, part of that uh, comes in with the smaller compressive strength and applied load for the lightweight SCC. Uh, but then the creep losses, or the total creep, were greater for lightweight self-consolidated concrete. And then Bymaster and Hale in 2010, again, compared lightweight SCC and conventional self-consolidating concrete found that SCC had two to three times greater shrinkage after four months, so still looking at early age shrinkage being less for lightweight SCC, but then a 30% greater total losses uh, for lightweight SCC. And finally, again, the losses were less than what was predicted by the uh, different methods. So if we summarize the effects 
uh, that we've seen from lightweight concrete, self-consolidating concrete over time through a variety of research projects, we see that uh, conventional self-consolidating concrete, which is using a, a hard rock aggregate, and lightweight concrete both have been observed to have higher shrinkage. Uh, we see that we have a reduction in autogenous shrinkage and a small expansion at early ages for lightweight concrete, but that doesn't necessarily provide us a benefit when we're talking about pre-stressing there at one day of age when the concrete is already set. We also uh, see a repeated theme of higher creep for SCC and lightweight concrete, uh, but often a lower creep coefficient uh, when we have the lightweight aggregates. So if we take that over into pre-stress losses, uh, we see that we are always had a lower or a larger elastic shortening for lightweight concrete, so we would expect that with lightweight SCC. Larger losses for self-consolidating concrete, but that in almost all cases, the predictions for losses have been adequate or have predicted greater losses than what was actually observed. So looking at the testing program that we have been working on, both when I was at Arkansas as well as at the University of Oklahoma, we've looked at six different SCC mixtures, four of which were with lightweight aggregates, expanded clay, and expanded shale. <coughs> Uh, with fresh properties to qualify as uh, self-consolidating concrete, measuring the slump flow, the J-ring, the L-box, and the visual stability. And we had compressive strengths at release, or at one day, of 4,000 PSI or 6,000 PSI, and then compressive strengths at 28 days of 6,000 or 7,000 PSI. So just looking at some of the creep behavior for a uh, 6,000 PSI, 28 days, 4,000 PSI release, uh, lightweight SCC mixture using expanded shale aggregates. Uh, when we loaded uh, the concrete at one day, so early on, we had a much higher creep coefficient than when loaded at 28 days. Okay, and it's interesting to note that early on uh, we had a lower creep coefficient for the lightweight SCC, but most of that can be attributed to uh, the large elastic shortening that happens whenever we first load uh, our lightweight SCC specimens. And then when loaded at 28 days, uh, we had a less creep and a lower creep coefficient as well for our materials, uh, partly due to the, uh, the higher elastic modules at those times. But in both cases, uh, we did note higher total strains, or creep strains for the lightweight SCC than for our conventional hard rock SCC. Uh, in some of our shrinkage testing, uh, which included or which consisted of 6 inch by 12 inch uh, concrete cylinders with vibrating wire strain gauges embedded inside of them. So we were able to uh, measure shrinkage from uh, immediately after casting the concrete. We did observe uh, the, an expansion of the lightweight SCC at early ages, uh, but uh, we also observed that the uh, SCC had a much higher shrinkage rate early on, uh, but then uh, flattened out over time, whereas the lightweight concrete continued to exhibit shrinkage uh, at later ages. If we looked at uh, just measuring shrinkage from one day, so at the time when we would actually release the pre-stress, uh, we see that uh, we end up with a higher shrinkage for the lightweight SCC specimens uh, out at the 210-day the mark, which is as far as we were at at this time. Uh, and then also noting on uh, the two different curves we have here, we had two different environmental conditions. We have one in the uh, an environmental chamber with 50% relative humidity and one uh, in an enclosure in our high bay that had about 10% relative humidity. And you can tell by the separation between uh, the two, these two curves, which was for the lightweight SCC, and then the two normal weight curves are right on top of one another. And so the environmental conditions had a much larger effect on the lightweight SCC than on the normal weight SCC. So comparing the two, Again, we have this small expansion at early ages, but I have a larger shrinkage for our lightweight SCC specimens over time. Uh, then if we compare to uh, the C-157 uh, shrinkage test, so using the 3 inch by 3 inch bars as opposed to the 6 by 12 cylinders, uh, and looking again at the different curves we have here, so for the normal weight SCC, the uh, difference between uh, the two curves for the specimen size was much less than when we consider the lightweight SCC. So we see the potential for larger effects uh, both on humidity as well as uh, specimen size when considering 
lightweight self-consolidating concrete. Uh, so as far as pre-stress losses that were measured, we've cast 16 uh, 6 inch by 14 inch cross-section beams that are 8 feet long, contain a single strand, half inch special uh, and 0.6 inch strand. Uh, we had some beams that had strands at 2 inches from the bottom of the specimen, some specimens with strands 2 inches from the top. And then we've also had 25, uh, 6.75 inch by 12 inch, uh, 18 foot long beams that had 2.6 inch strands. And so we've looked at pre-stress losses. Uh, this presents just the first 28 days, but pre-stress losses using surface strain measurements. And so if we look at our small beam sections that again have uh, only one pre-stressing strand, and this is uh, the measured values divided by uh, the predicted values, uh, looking at uh, the, the lightweight specimens, the ones that had 0.6 inch strands, which had a significantly higher stress acting on the sections, were much better predicted by the current uh, prediction equations than uh, the 0.5 inch strand specimens that had a lower uh, stress. Then for the SCC specimens, uh, in m most cases the measured pre-stress losses were actually higher than uh, the predictions brought forth by both the Zia method and then the Ashto uh, refined prediction. Uh, then when looking at uh, the 6.75 by 12 inch beams that had 0.6 inch strands and they had two of them in each beam, uh, the Ashto method provided a better prediction but in all cases uh, this is for uh, all six mixtures so that had uh, the six uh, lightweight mixtures with both clay and with shale as well as uh, conventional limestone. In all cases we had uh, lower losses than what were predicted by both of the methods. So in summary, uh, looking at the current provisions for ACI and Ashto, uh, and are they suitable for lightweight self-consolidating concrete? Uh, preliminarily, we think that yes, that they are, uh, based on uh, the results we have up to this point. But we still will continue to work and uh, look at the effects of humidity as well as specimen size. So we did notice the uh, reduced shrinkage at early age, as well as a uh, slight expansion and that the lightweight aggregates delayed drying shrinkage, but that we still had larger shrinkage over time. Uh, the lower modulus of elasticity gave a higher elastic shortening loss, but uh, we did end up with about the same total losses for uh, SCC and lightweight SCC. Uh, we had a higher percentage of creep strain uh, for lightweight concrete than for uh, conventional SCC, but a lower creep coefficient because of that elastic shortening. So that's all I have to say. I appreciate your attention.